Hi everybody, I'm back again. Uh, if you like my video, please hit the like and subscribe so you never miss another video. But I'm gonna be talking about 1911 barrel fit, what you really need to know to make it work. There's been a lot of crazy stuff out there to give you a lot of expensive ideas, but it's actually something that's quite simple. So we're gonna start out with the uh, 1911. I have one right here, so I'm gonna make sure unloaded and it is you can tell gotta be very careful so that this doesn't take off because it's gonna hit you in the face or the eye you don't want to have any damages to your vision unlock her bring her back well actually that's a safety but it unlocks the slide and you pull this out here my slide stops are better than most people. And that's how you know. You have a nice little groove on the bottom. Makes it easy to pop out. If you like that, you can do it to yours. If you're a gunsmith, then you can take notes. Okay, so we don't need all that. Slide this guy off here. <laughs> okay, so I probably won't be needing the lower half to be able to uh, articulate what I'm talking about. But um, yes and no, we'll just hang on to it. And I'll let you know when we get to that part, the significance of all of this, but um, there you go, take the spring out. We're gonna take the uh, full length guide rod out. Some people don't like full length guide rods, but you kind of need them because without this this rod, your spring wear is incredibly fast. And uh, what happens is you can actually, uh, the slide takes a dip during the feed and uh, you can have a failure to feed. So to stop that from happening, you put a full length guide rod in there. All right, so. Let's get back to where I was talking about. So, all right, 1911 barrel fit. So you have a barrel and a bushing. Let's go the other way. There we go. And what we have here is a double link barrel system. Some people say that it's just one link right here, but that's not true. This is the other link right here. So what this guy does is it kind of tightens up the front of the muzzle here. So it's like a sideways link. Here's the slide, there's the bushing. So what it does is when the recoil spring pushes forward like that, this guy in here, let's see if I can get, no, my finger's not that small. It actually pulls this, the underside of the flange to this bushing. See, there's a little bit of chatter in there. You absolutely do need ch you know, some chatter there. I'm trying to catch my words here. But that chatter, what that does, and why it needs to be there, <laughs> is, I don't know if you can see the wear patterns. Probably not. Um, what happens, is when the recoil spring here pushes this forward, it can't like that. And you end up getting pressure on the front of the bushing tube and on the bottom right here. See that? See where it's nice and uh, white right there? Because the, the metal is kind of bare. That's actually a, a bearing surface, meaning that there's an awful lot of pressure there and it's worn the finish off so when 
your recoil spring goes forward, pushes it like this, so it cants. And it's anchored by this lug tab on the side. So, as you can see here, with the barrel, with the uh, wear patterns here, you see a bearing surface right at the end that's really shiny. You see a little bit of frostiness here that's shiny, like a frosty kind of shine because it's worn the finish. You see a little bit of shine right there uh, from the flip-flop of the play of the bushing, you know, um, because it doesn't fit very tight in the slide. It actually has a type of chatter to it that actually helps the, uh, the front barrel lock up. So when you look at the barrel, you also have a bearing surface right there. So right here and right there. Now, if you can imagine this, you know, when that recoil spring right there goes forward, it tilts the uh, bushing like this. It takes the slack out of it. So it's tight. If it doesn't cant, it's actually quite loose. See? If it cants, it locks it. So it doesn't have to be a, like a perfect diameter. You know, some people think that they have to, you know, kind of fit these two pieces really good and then also fit it to the slide. Well, that's incredibly complicated. But um, the easiest way to make the tie to your barrel, or the tie to your barrel, what am I saying? The, the um, take the chatter out of the front end of your 1911 is to file the back side of this bushing to reduce it because when this guy here gets uh, not as wide you start to reduce this area it increases the cant you know of the bushing which increases the pressure on the barrel so what actually has to happen um, when you fit your bushings, you don't have to run out there and buy a custom shop bushing. Although all the gunsmithing books and all the gun girls, uh, girls, <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same thing. Gurus <laughs> will tell you, oh, you have to lap these parts together. But to actually get the wear patterns and the operating angles uh, correct is is almost almost impossible because if this bushing grabs the barrel uh, when the slide moves forward to feed a bullet it'll actually prematurely pull the barrel um, be, you know uh, and what happens is the slide will start to wear the uh, top part of the barrel hood and the upper locking lugs most people don't don't tend to know what these lugs on the top of the barrel are for. These barrel lugs on the top are just meant to um, they what they do is they fit into these grooves uh, during the uh, feeding cycle and the recoil cycle. The weight of the slide. Um, takes a lot of the recoil pulse out of the expended shell. So what these uh, lugs do is, you know, when this thing's firing, you know, a shell is relaxing, it's coming out to be ejected, um, slide's coming back. It's just designed when in battery to hold, you know, uh, up against the slide, so the the mass of the slide actually retards the uh, the recoil blowback action, and that is the only reason for those 
those lugs that are before the barrel hood. They don't serve any other purpose. A lot of people, they think that if they put the barrel on the slide, right here, that's, uh, you know, they could just fit the, uh, the bottom lugs, which are these guys here with this link to get that match grade accuracy, to take the mechanical play out of the action. But um, it might be possible, but it's not going to be reliable because on a barrel to a 1911, the distance between the slide stop pin and the bottom of the lugs is kind of critical because if it gets if you have too tall of a link you're gonna have feed problems because uh, you're gonna force that and it's gonna change the timing of that feed dynamic and the lower the barrel sits inside the frame The, um, the better it's going to feed. But the higher this thing is linked, the further back this is going to go. And it's going to reduce the, um, the length of feed. It's going to actually make it a shorter feed cycle. The bullet's going to have to go in steeper. It's going to uh, put a lot of stress on that extractor claw. It does pre-fatigue the extractor claws. So typically when you link a barrel, which is what this part is in this pin, you, you don't want to go uh, any bigger than a number three link. This is a link. And there's a, there it is, there's a pin. Right there, it pivots on. That's that pin right there. And then that's that link right there. And this is a this is a, a, a replacement barrel. You can tell it doesn't have a pin or a link in it. And it also doesn't have much of a feed ramp on here. It's got the standard feed ramp for a 1911 to feed hardball, which it probably will. But um, for illustrative purposes, I put this here just to show you that... Uh, you know, the link in the, uh, the pin here have to fit kind of in the right spot here, so to speak. You want the pin of your slide stop, the bottom of your barrel lug, to fit snug when it's in battery and not be loose. You can tell right here. This is pretty snug because this is not moving. <laughs> you see that? It's not moving. Well, maybe a little bit, but not much. The way that the 1911 recoils, as you see, you have rifling. This is a really rough bore because this is a Rock Island barrel. And... Uh, I think they're button rifled or something to that nature. They force the mandrel down here, and the result is is you get some. See right there, where that dull spot is. You get a little bend in the bore. Doesn't really affect the accuracy that I can tell, but um, that's one clue that you might have a button rifled barrel, which is the most probably the most inexpensive way to rifle a barrel and uh, which tells me that my bore is probably bigger than 45 caliber because the barrel is really thin but um yeah so anyway getting back to the subject matter of your 1911 barrel and how this thing works and how you can accurize it uh, without busting your budget um, you want to make sure that you have a link 
that um, that brings that lower lug really close to your slide stop pin. So it takes a lot of that chatter out. But your slide stop itself with this pin is also a recoil bearing surface. So um, it'll actually move inside your frame right here. So that chatter right there takes some of the accuracy away. And it has to be somewhat loose in order that your, uh, let me give this a little whirl here. There we go. In order that your slide lock or slide release works correctly. So this can't be super tight because then it won't lock back when the last round is fired off your magazine. See there, again, is that little groove I was telling you about. Stick your finger in there and pull it out. So there's guys out there that think that I'm just a YouTuber, you know, trying to show off what I think I know. Well, look at that. What do you know? That actually makes the disassembly incredibly easy. And you might want to do that to your 1911s. I don't know why they don't make them like this. I made mine like this because I have over 20 years experience in this type of stuff. So uh, you might know a thing or two, but you know, also you want to have a little groove here so that you can actually get that detent plunger right there to catch in the right spot to make it easy to go in. See right there? Like that. Oh, that's so easy. And then uh, right there, there's the little finger groove. Pull her out. Just like that. Easy peasy. But this is a recoil bearing surface. So when the gun fires, it'll actually rotate this way. It'll go that way. Like, a, like that. Because... That's opposite the direction of the rifling. So when that that gun starts to uh, blow back that expended shell, that's what's going to happen. It's going to go like that. It's going to twist that way. So what that means, if you can imagine that, is that this area right here, this lug on the uh, the left side is critical compared to the one on the right. The one on the right is there, but it just stops the uh, forward movement of the barrel. This is not as critical for accuracy. Uh, however, a lot of people will try to square these off where, you know, both the left and right are perfectly even. And that that's okay. You know, that's kind of a beautiful way of doing it, but you'll never get it perfectly straight because what happens is your barrel hood here, um, depending on how wide it is, will play on how even those will wear. The more play you have in your barrel hood, the more accelerated the wear on your left barrel lug. And you can kiss your uh, mechanical accuracy goodbye because it's just not possible. You're not going to get it regardless of whoever taught you or whatever it's just it's not possible so when you can see what I'm or you know you visualize what I'm telling you you can understand why uh, so your barrels all locked up in the slide like this got your recoil spring cants the uh, bushing kisses the barrel so it's not locking the front of the barrel rock solid but it's just kissing it so the bushing does not pull the barrel back and forth. The upper lugs does that in the slide. So your bushing, when you reduce the backside, should not pull the barrel at all. It should be something like two thousandths of an inch play to prevent that from happening. The bushing is not supposed to pull the barrel at all. So um it's enough about the bushing i think you got it and i think there's enough about the barrel hood and the lugs but when this thing recoils like this 
in this direction this it's the opposite direction of the rifling the load surface is this lower left uh, lug and the side of the barrel hood those are your critical areas for mechanical um, accuracy so you want to make sure you have the right link in your gun where you can get that. Remember, if you go too tall here, what's going to happen is it's going to mess with your feet. And if your barrel hood is not wide enough, this thing is going to cause more undue pressure on that bottom lower lug and it's going to cause a lot of wear in the link and in the link pin and these guys do fall apart they do slip in and out um, not when you're shooting the gun though but they can cause a jam if that pin happens to come out of there when you're shooting and rub right here on this inside surface you're gonna get a jam. So you don't want that to happen. Those pins are supposed to be a uh, pressed fit as, as snug as possible. And if it slips in and out, there is there is a problem with your gun. They might have done that in the past, but um, you know some of the older Springfields do that. But that's, that's actually something that's going to cause you a lot of problems. There's no reason for that pin to slip in and out. It has to be pressed in where it's snug as a bug under a rug. Can you imagine a combat? You know, you take your gun apart and that pin falls out in the dirt somewhere. You're, you got some problems now, so you want to avoid all of that. So when you look at your slide right here, like saying right here, a lot of people say right here when they do their videos. There we go. So we'll put the bushing in right here. Just like that. And so when you reduce the back side of the bushing and uh, you, you pull right here, you, you want to have like the barrel just where you can chatter it. Like that, you see how it is? It's not pulling the barrel at all. The barrel slides in the bushing. Like that, but it does not pull the barrel. So that's kind of how you fit your barrel bushing. You reduce the back side so that when this thing cants under the pressure of your recoil spring, that it doesn't grab your barrel but it reduces the chatter in the front so much that it has um, increased the accuracy without being too tight. And the barrel hood, right here, see? Is a pretty good fit. Some people try for three thousandths of an inch on either side. 2000 is ideal because uh, when metal fits ever so close you get this galling, the scratching that you see here. What it is is kind of an adhesive wear. It's like dragging a pencil eraser across another surface. You know the two metals are not similar so you end up getting a little bit of a you know, a texture on there called galling, but it's actually adhesive wear. The metal is actually um, causing an abrasive effect. You don't want that, so you have to have some kind of mechanical looseness to prevent, uh, or you not totally prevent it, but to keep it, you know, keep it uh, regulated so you don't want to wear your parts out. But this is a really close fitting barrel. It's about as good as it gets for what it is. You know Rock Island barrels just fit. You know you don't have to file it on either side because you know for a uh, drop in barrel it's can't get any better than that. You know? 
So that's pretty much how you acarize your 1911. You make sure you have your, um, you know, the right link where your uh, your lugs line up with the center bore of the link, like that. You may not be able to help if your barrel hood to, is is uh, is is narrower. You might not be able to change that, but that's no big deal. And then you reduce the back side of your bushing in order that you do not have you know, too much play in the bushing. And it doesn't pull the arrow forward and your upper lugs just reduce the blowback of the recoil energy. You don't have to put a really tall link to push the barrel up higher on the slide, which is what a lot of people try to accomplish. But what that does is it messes up the feed ramp in a way that you're going to have to start reducing it in order to get to function. And uh, this one here had quite a bit of work to it. But it is a reliable gun and it took a little bit to get to this point. But <clears throat> anyway, that's what it is. So if you want to accurize your 1911 without busting your budget, you get yourself a number two, number two point or a 2.5 or a number three link, and see which one best fit down here where you know it's not sticking out too far. We're just kind of all lines up like that. And uh, then you just reduce the back of your bushing until you get the uh, that, that fit we were just talking about. And that's all there is to it. You know, you can spend a fortune on guns or you can buy a cheap one and do it. It's no big deal. It's going to be pretty hard to mess this stuff up. If you mess a bushing up, probably get one of these for 25 at the most, 25 USD. Not a very expensive part, very common. You can get them anywhere because it's a 1911. And... Uh, you know, if, you're, if your link is too small, um, you're just going to end up getting some really strange impact patterns right down here on your barrel. If it's too long, you're going to get accelerated wear on the top. And you're also going to have a lot of uh, impact wear right here on the back side, which is called the vertical impact surface. You can tell mine's hit a few times, but um, that's all it is to it. Not rocket science. And uh, you guys have a have a good day. If you like and subscribe, you can catch my next video. You won't miss out. And, um, and that's how that works. <laughs> you guys, have a good one. Bye.